Hey everyone, it's Ricky Molina from the Ricky Molina YouTube channel. Glad you could be with me today. You know, it's been a while, and this time around I thought it would be good to do a chord study, chord analysis of the song Your Latest Trick by Dire Straits. Now, as you may recall, Dire Straits was led by Mark Knopfler, who is the um, electric rock guitar virtuoso from Scotland, and uh, greatly influenced by Chet Atkins, among others, and uh, he's just the master of finger picking. And this particular song off of the album Brothers in Arms, which was released in 1985, may not have been, you know, the number one billboard hit of the time, but really stood out to many because of its jazziness. In my opinion, your latest trick is one of the greatest compositions that Mark Knopfler ever made. It is just a beautiful song and the chords really present some challenges to most uh, up-and-coming musicians uh, because the sounds are different with these jazz chords. And we're going to go through them one by one. So I'll be emphasizing the chord progression more than the leads, although occasionally I might throw in a little bit of a, a comment here or there um, in terms of the soloing. The horn parts take the solos for the most part. Okay, now the song is broken up essentially into three parts. So I'd like to refer to part one as the horn parts. In the beginning of the song, at the introduction, you have a trumpet solo played by Randy Brecker in the studio album version. And uh, the rest of the horn solos are saxophone solos uh, played by Michael Brecker. Part two, I'd like to refer to as the verses. And uh, part three is the break that leads into the horn part one. Okay, so part three leads back into part one, and you can refer to the horn parts as actually the chorus of the song. So we start out the song with um, the trumpet solo. And that's Mark Knopfler playing uh, a distorted Les Paul there, slightly distorted. Um, and that's an A major seven chord in the seventh position. And the chords, by the way, are all being played by an electric piano, electric keyboard, a Fender Rhodes. And um, so they're, the chords are really not being played by a guitar. But this being a guitar lesson, it's important to learn the chords that are played by the Fender Rhodes. Okay, so we, once again, we start off with the A major 7. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. That's a B major. Descending B over A, which is actually um, the G sharp in the bass here, just below the B major chord still. So descending bass line there. Okay, you've got the B major right inside the G sharp minor chord. So once again, Seven. F sharp major da. ascending up to the A sharp B major that's the B over A A in the bass okay that's a G sharp 7 G sharp augmented chord or D sharp minor six this is all very slow at around 71 beats per minute so we wrap around this twice in the introduction very slow beat 71 beats per minute once again Da, da, da. Descending bass scale, G sharp minor, da, da, da. A major seven, da, 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 da. F sharp, a 
descending bass line there, A sharp, back to B major, descending, G sharp 7, da 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 da, turn that G sharp 7 into a G sharp augmented right there, by placing your third finger on the fifth, fifth fret, second string, Seven. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. A major seven. Da, 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 da. F sharp major. A, A sharp. B major. Descending. G sharp seven. G sharp augmented. A major 7 and then here's the holding chord before we get into a faster tempo and that is a D9 or G sharp augmented 9 you can also play it up here that would be a C augmented way up here it's the equivalent of the D9 essentially da, da, da. and the trumpet falls out and then we start with the faster uh, horn part here unlike the intro uh, when we speed up after the trumpet solo and the sax solo comes in now and we're talking about much faster tempo okay so we went from 71 beats per minute to like 120 something so we start off with Just as an aside, that C sharp minor sounds very familiar eerily to Sultans of Swing. Okay, which is just a half step higher. But we won't go there today. Okay, this song is enough of a challenge. So C sharp minor. play it again for you a little slow more slowly da, 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 da. So if you notice, that part is very similar to the introduction slow solo trumpet part, except for the C-sharp minor at the beginning into the A. Instead of an A major 7 starting us off, we have a C-sharp minor. Da, 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 da. But the B descending part is identical da, 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 to the trumpet solo introduction. Da, da, da. move into verse one so this would be part two we just completed essentially part one part two is really the verses so the first verse starts off all the late night bargains have been struck that's an e major chord all the late night bargains have been struck da, 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 da. and that is a d flat major chord 
But if you notice, we're just climbing up a bass line here. All the late night bargains have been struck between the satin bows and the bells. And then prehistoric garbage trucks, F sharp minor. Got the city to themselves. Or if you prefer the C augmented. So once again, all the late night bargains have been struck between the satin bows and the bells. Prehistoric garbage trucks have got the city to themselves. And then a little more verse action. Echoes, roars, and dinosaurs. Sharp minor, most of the whores are only taking calls for cash. D9. Mm -hmm. And so now we move into the I don't know how it happened. That's your transition part. I like to refer to it as a break or a pre chorus because it's going to lead us right into the horn part, which essentially is the chorus of the song. So A major, I don't know how it. B. Over a. It was faster than the eye could. That's E major. Could. A9, you've got the 9 up there. A9, A major chord with a 9. But all I can do. And he plays the E major part in live on his uh, Les Paul. And your latest trick Back to the horn part Now I'm just going to skip a verse Just to save some time for this video Now it's E major Last, last call for alcohol. F sharp minor seven. Da, 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 da. F sharp minor. Da, da, da. D nine. Da, da, da. Let's do it again. And we're standing outside this wonderland. E major. F sharp minor seven. Looking so bereaved. B major. Don't forget the ascending bass line there. And we're standing outside this wonderland, looking so bereaved and so bereft, like a Bowery bum when he finally understands. The bottle's empty and there's nothing left. D9. And here again is the transition part. A major, don't know how it happened. B, ascending. It all took place, E major. So, A9 to A. back again to the intro solo part. Now on the studio version, uh, we actually end the song with the sax solo. I call it the chorus or part one. Um, they play it seven times on the way out. So seven rounds of the sax solo. And in the live version, you hear Mark Knopfler joining in on the solo part a little bit with his Les Paul. Da -da -da -da.
that's pretty much it for your latest trick, the beautiful jazz number from Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits off of the Brothers in Arms album, 1985 release. By the way, I happen to be playing an Eastman T58V. V stands for vintage. It's got a uh, vintage... Uh, it's a new guitar, but they kind of made it look vintage. Um, and it's just a real pleasure to play. Uh, great action. Uh, the neck is beautiful, uh, comfortable for my fingers. I like that little extra width that the Gretches don't offer. Um, there's a little bit of a nut width here, um, which I happen to prefer because I'm a finger picker guy. The whammy bar doesn't make the strings go out of tune much at all, if anything. And um, it's got a great sound. So, um, um, Eastman's are great guitars for the most part. And uh, you really can't go wrong with them. It's a quality guitar company. Um, I really love Eastman's. They just fit my fingers and my body shape. Uh, the arch top rests very comfortably on my lap. I don't play with a strap traditionally. I don't like straps because I feel constrained with them. And so the guitar has to sit just really nicely in my lap. And that's like a major consideration. I've traded in Pat Metheny model Ibanez signature guitars because they they were too big uh they they were too uncomfortable on my lap a george benson signature guitar i traded in because of the same reason i'm really picky about the way a guitar sits on your lap and this guitar works for me i guess it takes years to discover these idiosyncrasies particularities that really make a difference in term in playing in terms of playing by the way i'll have links for the album and the track below this video. I'll also put up a PDF eventually uh, of these chords. And if you care to make a donation, which I'd greatly appreciate, uh, please click on the PayPal me link below this video. If you'd like to also, I'd appreciate if you would hit the subscribe and the like button. That will give me an incentive to do more videos like this one and others. So without further ado, this is Ricky Molina from the Ricky Molina YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.